Sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The myriads of flowers that we enjoy gazing at, the scents and the perfumes that we zoom over, the rich colors that attract us are the devices to attract insects and other animals for the transferring pollen grains. The diversity in structures of inflorescence, flowers and floral parts shows an amazing range of adaptation to ensure the formation of the end products of sexual reproduction. Flower, a fascinating organ of the angiosperms. Flowers are the objects of aesthetics, ornamental, social, religious and cultural value. They have been used as symbols for conveying important human feelings such as love, affection, happiness, grief, mourning, etc. Because of this reason, we usually grow flower yielding plants in our houses and gardens. Morphologically, flower is considered as a modified shoot for the sexual reproduction of the plant. The flower, it consists of four whorls. The outermost whorl is the calyx which is made up of sepals. The next whorl is the corolla which is made up of petals. Then comes the male reproductive part, the stamen or the antrecium, which consists of two parts, the anther and the filament. And the female reproductive part, the pistil or the gynecium, which consists of three parts, ovary, style and stigma. Pre-fertilization, the structure and events. In angiosperms, the reproductive phase is marked by the initiation of flowers. During this phase, a number of hormonal and structural changes are initiated, which leads to the differentiation and further development of the floral primordium. Shoot epical meristem is transformed into the reproductive meristem. It grows to form the inflorescence axis over which the floral primordia develops. They grow into floral buds and then into flowers. In each flower, the antrecium and gynecium differentiate and develop. Antrecium represents the male reproductive organ which consists of stamens in a flower. The gynecium represents the female reproductive organs which consists of carpels in a flower. Stamen, the microsporangium and the pollen grain. The two parts of a stamen are the long and the slender stalk called the filament and the terminal generally lobed structure called the anther. The proximal end of the filament is attached to the thalamus or the petal of the flower. The number and length of the stamens are variable in flowers of different species. A typical angiosperm anther is bilobed with each lobe having two theca. This type of anther is said to be dithecus. A longitudinal groove runs lengthwise separating the theca. The stamen is developed as a projection. It elongates and the tip becomes four-lobed. This four-lobed structure is the young anther. Each lobe contains an elongated microsporangium. The four-lobed anther begins its development as an undifferentiated mass of compactly arranged homogeneous parenchyma cells surrounded by an epidermis. It becomes two-lobed and then when mature it becomes four-lobed. Within the four lobes, some of the hypodermal cells at each corner become differentiated by their large size, radial elongation and more conspicuous nuclei. These form the archisporium. Each archisporial cell divides to form a primary parietal cell towards the epidermis and a primary sporogenous cells towards the inside. The primary parietal cell divides by periclinal and anticlinal divisions to form the wall of the anther. 
the primary sporogenous cell divides repeatedly to form the sporogenous tissue the sporogenous tissue occupies the center of each microsporangium and is composed of sporogenous cells or microsporocytes the sporogenous cells have abundant cytoplasm and prominent nuclei the wall of the anther is multilayered it is composed of epidermis endothelium middle layer and tapetum the tapetum is the nutritive tissue which develops the sporogenous tissue and nourishes the developing pollen grains the developing pollen grains consume the products of the middle layers and tapetum cells of the tapetum possess dense cytoplasm and generally have more than one nuclei here is the structure of the male reproductive part a typical stamen it has got an anther and a long stalk known as the filament and in the three dimensional cut section of an anther you can see the four lobes and these regions are the lines of dehiscence and these st structures are the pollen sacs where you can see the pollen grains now here is the development of the anther here this is the one microsporangium second microsporangium third microsporangium and the fourth microsporangium each microsporangium it has got an outer layer known as the epidermis here is the epidermis inner to it lies the endothelium then the middle layers and in the innermost layer you can see the tapetum which gives nourishment and these are the microspore mother cells which give rise to the pollen grains microsporogenesis the process of the formation of microspore or pollen grain from a pollen mother cell in the microsporangium of an anther is called microsporogenesis the sporogenous cell divide and give rise to the pollen grain mother cell the pollen grain mother cell contains two sets of chromosome and hence they are said to be diploid as the anther matures each microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four haploid microspores or pollen grains as pollen grains are formed after meiosis they are haploid the chromosome number is reduced into half after meiosis and these pollen grains are arranged in the form of a tetrad later the mature pollen grains separate from the tetrad here this is a mature pollen grain the outermost layer is the exine innermost layer is the entain at certain areas there is no deposition of sporopollenin and that region is known as the germ pore it undergoes two meiotic divisions so as to form four haploid microspores and these microspores each one has got an outer wall the exine the entain and the two nucleus pollen grain pollen grains are generally spherical in shape the outer surface may have spines ridges or furrows A mature pollen grain has a two layered thick wall. The outer layer is called exine. It is thick and cuticularized and often with spinous outgrowth. The exine exhibits fascinating array of patterns and designs. The inner is thin and smooth and is called entine. Entine is made up of cellulose. The exine is formed of a complex substance called sporopollenin. It is resistant to decay and hence the pollen grains are seen well preserved in fossils. This wall material is one of the most resistant biological material known. It can withstand high temperature, strong acids and alkali. It cannot be degraded by the enzymes known so far. At certain places the exine is absent or very thin giving an appearance of a pore or aperture called the germ pore there are three germ pores in dicots 
and one germ pore in monocots the intine grows out as pollen tube through germ pores during the germination of pollen grain the pollen grain is the first cell of male gametophyte it is the first cell of the male gametophyte The cytoplasm of pollen grain is surrounded by a plasma membrane. When the pollen grain is mature, it contains two cells, the vegetative cell and the generative cell. The vegetative cell is bigger, has abundant food reserve and a large irregularly shaped nucleus. The generative cell is small and floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. It is spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm and nucleus. In over 60% of angiosperms, pollen grains are shed at this two cell stage. In the remaining species, the generative cell divides mitotically to give rise to the two male gametes before pollen grains are shed. Here is the pollen grain. These are the germ pore. This is the cytoplasm, the tube nucleus and the generative cell. Here the generative cell divides to form the two male gametes. And the vegetative cell give rise nourishment for the developing pollen grain or the male gametes. Pollen viability. The period for which pollen grains remains functional is called the pollen viability. It depends upon the prevailing temperature and humidity. In some cereals like rice and wheat, pollen grains remain viable only for 30 minutes. In many such cases, self-pollination occurs. Pollen bank. The pollen grains of a large number of species can be stored for years in liquid nitrogen at 196 degrees centigrade. And that is called the pollen bank. The stored pollen grains can be used in crop breeding programs similar to seed banks. Pollen allergy. In some people, the pollen grains of certain species cause severe allergies and bronchial afflictions. This may lead to chronic respiratory disorders like asthma and bronchitis. Asthma and bronchitis. Parathenium or carrot grass that came into India as a contaminant with imported wheat has become ubiquitous in occurrence and causes pollen allergy. Pollen grains are rich in nutrients. Nowadays, pollen tablets are used as food supplements. In Western countries, a large number of pollen products in the form of tablets and syrups are available in the market. Pollen consumption has been claimed to increase the performance of athletes and race horses. So, in this session, we have learned the structure of a flower. A flower consists of four whorls, the calyx, the corolla, the antrisium and the gynesium. Antrisium is the male reproductive part and gynesium is the female reproductive part. And the structure and development of the microsporangium takes place and that results in the formation of the microspores or the pollen grains. And the process of the formation of the pollen grains from a pollen mother cell in the microsporangium of an anther is called the microsporogenesis. And each pollen grain has got two walls, outer wall, exine and inner wall in time. It has got a single nucleus which undergoes mitosis so, so as to form an upper vegetative cell and a lower generative cell. The generative cell again undergoes one more mitosis to produce the two male gametes.